Hey, this is Ryan with PC DJ. I put together this video uh, to show you how to set up your multi-channel sound card or your sound card that's built into your DJ controller for use with PC DJ Dex 2 or Red Mobile 2. Uh, multi-channel sound cards usually come with ASIO drivers. If it's a Windows, it is an ASIO driver, ASIO. Uh, under the Mac environment, it's Core Audio. Uh, both accomplish the same thing, which allows you to dedicate two separate channels uh, so either right from the sound card you have a main output and then your second channel is for your monitor or your Q channel or you can uh, set, set it up so that player A has an output and player B has an output so two separate stereo outs and then you run to two channels of any external mixer and then you'd be able to cue and monitor directly from your mixer as you would coming out of two CD players or a dual deck CD player and uh, two turntables. Uh, so first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you've installed the drivers that come with your sound card or your DJ controller. Um, there usually comes with an install CD within the box. Make sure that's installed. Um, uh, you know, usually it's a matter of just installing the CD and then it'll prompt you to plug in the sound card or your controller uh, and step you through the whole process. Another good rule of thumb is to probably check the manufacturer's website for your sound card. Make sure you have the most up-to-date drivers. Uh, again, you want ASIO drivers for Windows. Uh, typically speaking, on the Mac side, you don't need to update drivers. The Core Audio is built into the Mac OS X and uh, will just install automatically. One of the great things about a Mac. Um, so here, this is how we basically do this. You know, when you're, I've got Dex 2 in front of me right here. Uh, the same thing applies, same information for Red Mobile 2. Uh, so you have the sound card plugged in, it's on, you open up the software, uh, you'll go into the configuration mode, click the little gear icon in the top left or right corner of your screen, it'll open up preferences. Uh, you have your general tab and your audio MIDI tab. Click on your audio MIDI tab. Right here you'll see below the MIDI in devices, uh, this is where you would select your MIDI controller but that's not what we're doing right now. Below that you'll have select audio device. From this drop down menu, and I've installed a few different sound cards on this computer uh, over time to test, uh, I'm going to pick the E-Box. So what you'll see from this drop down menu is every sound card or audio device that you have available for this machine. It'll actually show you options for something that's not connected as well. So again, make sure your sound card's connected. Go down and choose the one that applies to your card. Uh, for instance, uh, we do sell the Ver support from American Audio on our website. Uh, it's very popular with our users. Uh, so you would pick American Audio USB ASIO driver. Uh, in this case, I'm going to pick Ebox 44 USB ASIO driver, ASIO. So you select that. So that's the first thing you're going to want to do. Make sure you've enabled your sound card, select your sound card, make sure it says ASIO there under the Windows OS. Uh, it'll just say the sound card name under the Mac, under a Mac uh, operating system. So here's a couple other things. Right below this, you have latency, all right? Latency is the speed in which the software reacts or responds. Uh, when you hit play for instance. So you hit play, there's obviously a little bit of a delay. So the smaller this buffer, right, the smaller this latency, the faster it responds. Uh, but there's also a catch to that. Uh, the lower you go, the more taxing it is on resources with the machine, uh, the less audio you're buffering into memory. Uh, so what can happen is you can get uh, poor sound quality, skipping possibly, items like that. So the whole idea is to adjust this for your best performance. You want to get it as low as possible uh, without affecting performance or sound quality or skips or hiccups or any of that type of thing. So you just adjust this. Uh, I usually run on this machine with ASIO around eight, between five and eight milliseconds. It just depends on uh, on the, on the machine really. So again, you adjust it based on the, on the best performance. So get as low as possible without affecting performance. Uh, below this, you have your select your output mode. Okay, normal is just going to send a single output through the one two output on your sound card or the uh, controller's output uh, that's built in. Um, so if you just want to cue from the internal sound card, say you do not want to use an external mixer at all, you want to use uh, Dex or Red Mobile's built-in virtual mixer, you're going to choose multi-channel sound card first. Now this applies to any ASIO 
multi-channel sound card or the sound card built in your controller. You always want to select multi-channel sound card. So that's the first thing. Now below, if you do not select anything else, you see how these are not checked, what's going to happen is it's going to automatically send, um, you know, player A, uh, or sorry, player A and B, your main output will come through the 1-2 output on your sound card. The 3-4 output uh, is going to be your Q channel for your headphones. That's where you're going to preview and monitor uh, songs. Now, some sound cards like the VersaPort, it actually has a jack on the front for um, plugging your headphones directly. So the control panel, the control desk for the sound card itself, you can dedicate or choose what outputs to send to that headphone out. So in this case, you would send the 3-4 through the headphone output. So that's going to be your Q channel right on the front of that card. So 1-2 is your main, 3-4 is your Q. All right, so if you want to set up an external mixer, it's as simple as this. Simply click Use External Mixer after multi-channel mode is selected, and that's going to send player A out through the 1-2 output on the sound card. Player B is going to go through the 3-4 output. So you're going to run 1-2 to line 1 of your mixer, 3-4 to line 2, or any open channels for that matter, and you'll be able to cue and preview and monitor from your mixer uh, as you're used to doing. So you can also disable the crossfader. Uh, in external mixer mode, so the virtual on-screen fader will be completely disabled. Uh, can come in handy because if you forget where the fader's at on screen and you're messing with things externally and you're wondering why you're not getting sound, it's probably because the virtual fader's left to one side or the other. Uh, so you can simply disable that here by clicking the little checkbox. Now you do have an option uh, for two sound cards, so if you had a sound card, and, and two sound card mode is only good for internal use of the virtual mixer on screen, okay? So only the, the, the mixer on screen is what's going to uh, be used, you know, you're going to be able to use with the two different sound cards. So one sound card is going to be your main, the other is going to be your monitor. In that case, you're going to leave this in normal, not multi-channel mode. You're going to disable these others. You're going to make sure it says, it's usually not going to be ASIO, you're usually going to be using direct sound. So we'd use like your built-in speakers, let's say, that's built into your computer. So you'd use that as one audio device. And then here is going to be your Q channel where it says no audio. You would select your other audio device for your headphone queuing. Again, that work mode and setting things up that way is only good if you're going to be using the on-screen mixer and if you don't have a true multi-channel pro audio card that supports ASIO drivers. Uh, so one other thing, we'll leave this in multi-channel mode. This on, and we'll leave it on internal mixer mode. So if you're using the internal mixer, you would simply use these little headphone cue buttons. Uh, it's, you'll see them also in the red mobile skin. Uh, so if you enable the, the left cue, for instance, that would send player A through the Q channel, so you can listen to that in your headphones. If you enable the headphone button on the B side, that's going to send that channel to your headphones. And you can, of course, have them both enabled and send both to your headphones. And you can ad uh, adjust right here the, the level of uh, headphones, uh, the mix of the headphones with the main, uh, which, is, which is all adjustable. Of course, most people these days run using an external mixer, uh, and usually with some kind of controller as well. So hopefully that helps. Uh, we're going to be releasing a few more uh, series of uh, short videos that just goes over every little aspect of the software. And we hope you learned something today. Thanks.